Hello, 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 and welcome to Believe. That's B-L-E-A-V in Lions, right here on the Believe Network. As always, I'm your host at Javanaugh87, Jack Kavanaugh, and joining me as always for this first Victory Sunday, Victory Monday, whenever you're listening to this first win of the season, and we get to celebrate with the all-pro whose hands really need to be passed around the NFL with all the drops and interceptions today around the league. Jeez. Glover Quinn. What's up, man? Quandre actually just dropped another one. He did. He did. (laughs) I I wasn't sure if you'd seen that or not. (laughs) Tough tough catch, but, I mean, you want to say you got the best hands, you got to catch that one, right? You do. You do. And I know. Nice play, but we got to get that one. It did leave me with a question, though, because it was fourth down and they would have end up losing yards anyways. As a DB, though, you're still going for that interception always at that right? point in the game. Of course. I mean, if it's at the end of the game and it makes a huge difference when if you need a, you know, a play or this or that to try to get closer and a team has the opportunity to either punt it or take a shot and it's fourth down and they're on the 50 and they throw a bomb. And you can catch an interception at the five, but may get tackled, or you can knock it down or not catch it, and you get the ball at the 50. You know, you may think about that, but at that point in the game, first quarter or second quarter, early in the game, I mean, they were on the, what, 30? Something 35? like that. It's not like they're gaining that many yards. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going for the interception every time right there. Because it's, it's, it's also like momentum. It's – Big plays is things that change the tide in the game. And so, hey, I'm going for the interception every time on that play. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports esports and even golf that online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in-game betting props and futures head to bet online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet Use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. That's B L E A V 50. Bet online where the game starts. And of course, as a interception leader yourself, you're always going for that interception. So I thought that would be the answer. Just wanted to confirm, but Back to the current day Lions. There was so much to celebrate. Aiden Hutchinson with not only his first career sack, not only his second career sack, he got the hat trick, put up three sacks. Amon Ross St. Brown tied an NFL record with eight receptions in an eighth straight game. He looked phenomenal going for over 180 yards and two scores. There was more. DeAndre Swift, first Lions running back with over with a 50-yard run in back-to-back games since Barry Sanders. And all of this was with our missing our starting left guard, our starting center, our starting right guard. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they I mean, the things that we talked about, right? We talked about Aiden Hutchinson had to have a better game this week. We had to hear his name called more than we heard it in the first game. And he came out and set the tone from the very beginning. He set the tone in the first drive. He affected the second drive, which helped, you know, get us a safety in one of those drives. Like, he was all over the place. Sacks, tackles. We heard his name called more in in the first half than we heard the whole entire game last week. So we said he had to be a factor. We knew that he would come out and show better. Not saying he played bad in week one, but you wanted to be a playmaker. You want to make plays, get tackles, get sacks. And so he made up for last week's game having zero sacks by getting three, which puts him at an average of one and a half sacks a game. You do that for 17 weeks, you're going to be the NFL all-time sack leader, right? So we knew that. He checked Mark. He did what he had to do. I'm on Ross St. Brown, right? We said that, you know, him in the slot against those guys, given what the Jacksonville wide receivers were able to do the week one, we knew 
he had an opportunity to have a big game. He's been doing it week in and week out, dating back to last year, setting the NFL record, like you said, with eight games of at least eight catches, and he continued that today. He was explosive in the past game. I think they even gave him a run in there. He was explosive. Like, he he did everything that he needed to do. He moved the chains, you know, outside of the one catch, what, you know, Kyle Fuller made a I – mean, one of the Fuller kids uh, made a great play, get that ball out of there. Um, but Amon Ross St. Brown, was, he was electric today. Um, nothing more can be said. What he's doing is incredible. Hopefully he, can, hopefully he continues that. And then DeAndre Swift, we said get him the ball. He's explosive. He's the guy. He's the catalyst for that offense. And he was that today, you know, coming in. I guess he had some injury issues, things. Didn't know how much he was going to be able to play. He ended up, when he was out there, he was effective. I mean, the play that he made, obviously we talk about the big runs, being able to push that ball, press that hole, cut back, and then just have the speed and explosiveness to get through there and get going like that. And then the touchdown he made, you know, catching the ball on the ground, being able to get up and get that ball into the end zone. Just, just an incredible play. So those three guys, we said going into the game that they had to be key and they were key. And then they they end up getting the get end up getting a win. And I will shout out to Jared Goff. He played an, an outstanding game today, made some great passes in the end zone, some great passes down the middle of the Hawkinson to other tight ends. Like he did a phenomenal job today. So shout out to Jared Goff for coming up with four touchdown passes and having a big day. Goff was just wheeling and dealing. And it feels as though through the first two weeks of the season, he's making plays he would have never attempted last year or even with the LA Rams. He was so much in structure, afraid to improvise. But now you're seeing him scramble. You're seeing him move in the pocket. And it is great. TJ Hawkinson, he did struggle throughout the game, two drops on six uh, targets, but then came up big when we needed him most. Same with Charles Harris with the strip sack on Carson Wentz. Wentz had a fumble, had an interception as well. Could have had several other interceptions. Tracy Walker dropped one. Um, but yeah, it was just a very good showing from the, the Lions. They moved people up front on the offensive line. Goff wheeled, he dealed, and it's not perfect, though. There were still a lot of problems, including that first touchdown by Curtis Samuel lined up as a running back, little wheel route, and blew by them. So is that a miscommunication? How do the Lions fix that going forward? Because it feels they're getting beat for big plays too often. Well, I mean, that's not a miscommunication. That's just a call. That's a play call. You know, they probably had some kind of blitz on or some kind of coverage to where the linebacker or the outside, the outside linebacker or the defensive end is responsible for the back. So when you're making that call, you're not expecting Curtis Samuel to be the running back. Right. So that's where you have veteran guys that can improvise on that. Right. So being in that situation. When you get and you see Curtis Samuel is the running back and you know that the defensive end is responsible for Curtis Samuel, right? Or the outside linebacker, and they feel like they can't. As a safety or as somebody, you have to make an adjustment. Switch to blitz, who cares, right? Who cares if we don't blitz? Coach, I, I could not leave my guy one-on-one -on -one with Curtis Samuel, right? So in those situations, your safety or your linebacker, I can't remember. I think it was 53 that was on him, right? So he would have been the defensive end, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's just a blitz where the, the, the outside guy, the defensive end is responsible for the back. And like most of the time you would think that there's a pass, there's a, a pass blocking back in the game, somebody that they're not expecting to get out into the pass game. Um, so when you see Curtis Samuel is the guy that you're lined up on for one, as the end, you should be making an adjustment. Hey, no, 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 no. I can't run with Curtis Samuel. I know they're not leaving him in there to pass block. He's going out. We got to abort. Like, we got to switch it up. Hey, you're bliss. No, you take the coverage. Let me run the stunt. Let me do whatever. It may not be perfect, but it is okay. We'll get guys covered and give ourselves a better chance. But leaving the linebacker or the defensive end matched up with him like that, that's going to be a touchdown every time. Good to know that because that is something that can be cleaned up, especially communication on a young defense still gelling and an absolute 
bone shaker of a hit was delivered as well. So it's not as though the Lions were completely torched. What did you see from the secondary in this game, though? Because Amani Oruwari did not play. Will Harris started for him. And it seemed as though a lot of the game, Jeff Akuda was on Terry McLaurin. Until right, I mean, he started cramping up and had to leave the field, actually. Right. So that's one thing we can't have, you know, cramps. But that's just part of it. If you, if, if, you know, it's early in the season. Guys still trying to get acclimated to playing full games. But, I mean, for the most part, you know, we thought that, that was a big matchup, right? The the line secondary versus the the the, the commanders wide receivers, and I, I I mean I have to say for the most part I feel like they held their own. You know, yeah, you're gonna give up some plays here or there. Those guys are talented, but being without a money, you know, Akuda starts cramping up. I mean, I thought Will Harris did enough. I thought Akuda did enough. You know, he was on M- M- McLaurin for most of the game, and you keep those guys in check. You know, I mean. They're going to make some plays. It's the NFL. So you're not going to shut those guys out the complete time. But you make enough plays. You do enough to win the game. But like I say, it helps when you're getting pressure from the D-line to where Carson Wentz is not just sitting back there trying to carve you up. And we saw that majorly in the first half, right? That's why they go into halftime with a huge lead. Coming out in the second half, you don't see Aiden Hutchinson had three sacks in the first half. I don't think he had any in the second half, right? So you don't see as much pressure on Carson Wentz and they start putting points up on the board, right? He starts making some passes, making some plays. They start getting some rhythm. So it it, it works hand in hand, right? You got to have rush and you got to have coverage. And I think the line secondary did enough to um, to help get, get them to win. Like I said, I would like to see more turnovers coming from the secondary, right? Tracy Walker dropped the pick, I'm sure. I mean, we had the pick on the two-point play um but that's just i just like to see those guys making more plays and being more you know ball hungry like wanting the ball punching script sacks things like that but week two i thought i thought they did they did well enough against a talented wide receiving core for me in week in week two so what if we had to give them a letter grade what would you put it on after first initial how would you grade the lions performance this week versus last uh well if last week if they were um last week I probably would have gave them a C minus, you know. Last week I thought AJ Brown made some big plays on them in, in crucial situations. Tracy Walker getting ejected out of the game, things like that. I probably would have gave him C minus to a D plus last week. This week I probably give them a, a a B minus to a B plus, you know, somewhere in that somewhere in that range. I mean you know, if you're dropping interceptions and, you know, obviously giving up touchdowns, it's hard for me to give you an A plus, right? But I, I would say they were they were somewhere, they were, they were better than last week. So I would give them, you know, B minus to a B, somewhere in there. Like, I feel like there's room for improvement. So I don't want to put them up in the B plus, A, a category right now. Agree with that. I That's kind of where I was leaning as well. Just a very solid performance absolutely a pass nothing to be ashamed about but room for improvement as the season goes on with this young developing secondary excited to see it however no playmaker like minka fitzpatrick back there minka with the interception that was phenomenal minka fitzpatrick could be one of the best safeties in the nfl he just continues to make play after play yeah, Minka is he he's incredible. And you know, he he deserves everything that he's got. You know, he he wasn't happy in Miami. He felt like he could be a, a star and he's went to Pittsburgh and shown that he can be a star. And, you know, he's an incredible football player and he's gonna he's still young. He's still young. So he's gonna continue to be hopefully an incredible player. He's gonna be fun to watch for a lot of years. Agreed, and hopefully the Lions can get a playmaker or have a playmaker emerge on the back end that puts up those interception numbers. I'm not. I'm we, not. We at- just got to you. 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 It's. It's very difficult to ask the offense to create all the time. You need some short fields. You need some. You know, sometimes where you get the ball and you're already in scoring position, right? That's from a turnover. And I mean, like you look at today, they got the safety, right? They got the safety. That's two points, right? So that puts the the commanders in situation. But now they're going for two, 
right? They don't get it. Then now they put like like they lost out on three points, missed field goal, and then they went for two, right? So they so then that two points plays a big deal. Anytime the defense can score, your chances of winning increases dramatically, right? So when you can score or you you do stuff to create scoring, right? Create scoring, catch your interception, t- return it back inside the 20. Now they're getting the ball already inside the 20 with big momentum coming into it. You know what I'm saying? Force a fumble and you recover it and you're in scoring position already. It's just very difficult over the course of a season to ask the offense to have to drive 60, 70 plus yards every time to try to get a score. And we can see, you know, with the with the new kickers and it like the kicking game is almost from a return standpoint, it's almost a non-factor right now. I mean, everybody's kicking the ball out the end zone. So you're not getting any kick returns. Every now and then you'll get a punt. But these punters are so talented, and these guys are like they punting the ball to where it's very hard to get returns in the in the punt game. Although we did have a good return in the kicking game today, um, but you you got to find ways to help the offense out. And I feel like a lot of that's going to be from the defense creating turnovers, creating fumbles, doing things to give the offense a short field, and that way you're complementing each other. We're playing good defense to go along with our amazing offense, and we're playing good at on special teams as well. That is something I did want to highlight was the special teams performed well. It seemed as there though there was always a hat on the on a hat, no real missed assignments. Love to see that. And as for this explosive offense, and granted, it's not all the offense because the defense added points too, but the Lions have scored 35 or more in their first two games this year. They did that once in 2021. So that is just so exciting as a Lions fan. And that's without three of our starting offensive linemen there. Right. And I think, you know, once those guys get back in there, the offensive line is going to be, you know, outstanding as they've already been been playing really, really well, especially in the run game. And we knew that, 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 that were, that they were the centerpiece, you know, for that offense, being able to protect the quarterback, being able to open holes for the running back, Allowing DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams to 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 have some space to make things happen, giving you know Jared Goff time to scan the field, make throws, and knowing that you have a receiving core by committee. Although Amon Ross St. Brown is really separating himself amongst those receivers, you know him creating and drawing a lot of attention to himself should open up more things for DJ Chark on the outside. And then, I mean, hopefully at some point this season, they get Jameson Williams back and they can have some electric guys on the offense along with DeAndre Swift and those guys. TJ Hawkinson, yeah, we can't have those drops, but he understands that he came back late in the game, make a nice tough catch across the middle. So I think those guys are going to be fine. I think those guys are going to be fine. They just got to stick to what they are, right? DeAndre Swift, Amon Ross St. Brown, let guys play their role, right? We don't don't put too much on Jared Goff. Keep it simple. Keep it smart. As far as the play action, the run game, the screens, the things that he loved to do, he looked very very comfortable back there orchestrating the offense. I think they look well. And then long as the long as the defensive line can continue to get pressure on the quarterback, you're gonna help a young secondary. And so with the booming defense, the budding defense, however we want to phrase it, complementing this offense, working in tandem. Who would you put as the MVP for the Detroit Lions in this game? Um, Defensively, I'm going to go Aiden Hutchinson defensively. I thought he set a tone for the whole defense in the first in the first quarter. I thought he set a tone and the defense just, you know, they they literally fed off of that. The entire day offensively, I think I will have to go with Amon Ross St. Brown. I think what he done today is is absolutely incredible. You know, it's hard to give it to a wide receiver without giving it to the quarterback because he's the one throwing him the ball. So you got to give Jared Goff credit for what he did today too. I think DeAndre Swift is amazing. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think he done enough. I would say just to be the MVP with what Amon Ross St. Brown did, the numbers that he put up. So I will have to give it to Amon today 
But Jared Goff obviously contributed in that point as well, throwing four touchdowns. So it just it was a great performance all around. But I would have to give it to the wide receiver. And, you know, like I said, I think he got a carry in there for a big for a big gain and then have to give it to Aiden Hutchinson on the defensive side for setting the tone early in the game. I'm glad you agree because those were the two players I was going to pick with the honorable mention to Goff. But I wanted you to go first just so I didn't look stupid <laughs> if you disagree with me. So love to hear that. Love that the players we needed to step up did. Very exciting. So what will the atmosphere be like in Detroit tomorrow? Or will you will they practice tomorrow? How does how does this work the next couple of days? Oh, so no, normally on Mondays you come in and there's you, you need to get a workout, right? You go in and a lot of guys don't like to lift, but you need to go in, get a workout, work some soreness out, get the muscles back flowing. Um, so they'll do that in the morning for the most part. Then you have meetings, going over the game, the film, watch all that stuff, go through what you did well, what you didn't do well. Um, you know, it's a lot better going into those meetings after a win than after a loss. Everybody's excited. The, the building has more energies, more vibe. You know, you got guys in the training room in the morning time getting treatment, making sure everybody's healthy and ready to go. Um, and then, like I said, after team meetings and stuff like that, you go to individual meetings and you dive deeper into the game. Um, like I said, we all we all see the game and they won, but there are some things that there's, you know, some groups probably didn't play as well. Some things that they want to get cleaned up. Like I said, it's a whole lot easier making those corrections after a win than after a loss, right? So they'll do that. And then, you know, I, and I said, I don't know their exact schedule, but we used to go out and we'll walk through some of those plays that we might have had a miscommunication on, like the Curtis Samuel touchdown. They may walk through uh a play that play to show to talk about some different things that they could do because we know it's a copycat league right one team saw it and had success one team didn't have success so now you'll have other teams that will see that and will try to do the same exact thing so we got to be ready and prepared to stop that and defend that later on in the season and you kind of do that you go outside you kind of get a couple striders a little running in just to you know get the lactic acid out of the body have the body start recovering, you know, and then Tuesday is generally the off day. And then you're, re you're right back in there on Wednesday preparing for the next week. And so with the Lions facing the Minnesota Vikings in week three and the Vikings facing the Eagles on Monday night football, will the team do anything to watch that together? Do the coaches watch? How, how does that work knowing that your opponent is playing live? Yeah, I don't, I don't know really how they're going to do it. I mean, we never done it. I mean, you might have some position groups that may get together. Like I say, the mood is a lot livelier after, after a win, right? So they may come out of there tomorrow and be like, hey, man, I'm going to have some you know food at my house. Come over. We can watch the game, hang out, right? But for the most part, coaches, they're probably still at the building, so they may be watching the game um, to see kind of what's happening live. Um, as players, you watch the game to get kind of get a live look. Like I said, you can get together as, as a position group or somebody and decide you want to watch the game. Very rarely do the team get together and you're sitting in the team meeting room. Hey, we're going to sit there and watch the game together. That don't really happen. I mean, we're going to be watching these guys all week. This is a division opponent. We played these guys several times. We just played Philly last week. So we know exactly what we got going on. Um, so I don't think they'll do anything special to watch that game. I think they'll be prepared to go, but I don't think they're going to have any kind of parties or whatever. It's only one win. They're one and one. So they'll be, they'll be ready to go next week. First division game. Um, but I don't think they'll do anything special tomorrow. All right. Good to know. I'm just interesting to see from a player's perspective, how these things work coming off a win, coming off a loss. Any final thoughts on the Detroit Lions today heading into next week or are the rest of the NFL in general? Because we had plenty of crazy games. We had the Jets upset the Browns at the last minute. We had the Patriots knock off the Steelers. We had the Colts shut out by the Jaguars. Tua Tugavaloa with six touchdown passes against Lamar Jackson with four TDs. 
also had the Giants beat the Panthers and the Buccaneers beat the Saints with a little bit of Andre Johnson, Cortland <laughs> Minigan action between right. Mike Evans and Lar- Marshawn Lattimore. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy first set of game, man. Like that Miami game was, you know, I, I thought that game was well over and, and, and Tua and Tyreek Hill put on the show. They bring those guys back. And they get a win in the end. That's that's huge for those guys. I don't know what's going on in Indianapolis. They thought Matt Ryan was the savior. They thought he was the piece to the offense. And I don't know if it's just he can't get the ball around. They can't protect him. I would have to take a deeper look at that game and see what's going on. But to get shut out by the Jacksonville Jaguars is – I don't even have a word for that. But it's not good. It's definitely not what they were expecting bringing Matt Ryan into that to that system. You know, I had Cleveland beating the Jets. The Jets, Coach Robert Sala, he was here in Houston when I was here. I know him personally. You know, he did a good job getting his guys going. I thought the, I thought Cleveland would get the win. The Jets made enough plays and scored enough points to get a win in the end, right? Um, you know, I had the Saints pick to beat Tampa, right? I said it, they were going to probably beat them because Tom Brady always struggles and, 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 uh, in New Orleans. But then I saw something this morning that said that Jameis Winston had four cracked ribs or bruised ribs or this or that. I was like, no, 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 no. I can't go against Tom with Jameis having four bruised ribs. And I don't know if it affected anybody in the game, but I changed my pick to Tampa and they got the win. But what Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore are doing every single time that they play each other is a little bit awful. They they fight every time they play against each other. And I understand they, they're division opponents and they go at each other. I get that. But you can't continue to hurt your team by being ejected from the game. Mike Evans being a big time receiver for for you know Tampa and Marshawn being the top cornerback for, for the New Orleans Saints. You can't continue to do that. And I'm sure some some consequences, some penalties will be handed down because it continues to happen over and over. And you just can't just can't have that. Um, the Giants rolled again. They get they get the win. They're two and zero for the first time probably in a long time. You know Pittsburgh. They let me down. I thought they I thought they would out physical, out tough, and, and you know go and be able to get a win against New England. New England showed that they have a winning pedigree. Some kind of way they're gonna find a way to win. So they don't they don't start out zero and two. They get a win. Pittsburgh. It's tough, man. The league is tough. The league is tough. We all know it from week in week out. The league is tough. Guys, that teams that you expect to win, they may not win. You know, it's all about how you show up. It's all about how you prepare. That's why you can't get too high. You can't get too low. And that's why I'm hoping that the Lions at one and one coming off of a tough game in week one, played a better game in week two. Now they get their first test on the road. Like, can we be ready to go? Who are we? Who, who are we going to be? Are we going to be the Lions of week one? Or are we going to be the Lions of week two? Who are we going to be? So be interesting to see. It's going to be very interesting to see. I cannot wait to follow along this week. We still have plenty of phenomenal games on the horizon. We get to watch division rivals, Bears and Packers play. We get to watch division rival and future opponent, the Vikings play. Two Monday night football games. It's a great time to be a fan of football. It is a beautiful time to be a fan of the Detroit Lions. And we will be back later this week to recap everything going on in the NFL, Detroit, everything you need to know. But until then, Glover, any pluggables to plug? Nah, man, just keep watching football. Keep watching football. Keep enjoying football. Keep enjoying the talent that these guys are displaying. And it's a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful thing. Beautiful sport, a beautiful game, beautiful team in the Detroit Lions who covered the spread. I believe it ended up as a one point, one and a half point spread over on Bet Online sponsors for this show. So until we get together later this week, we will see you next time.